Spanish government bond yields above 6% sparked further worries over Europe's sovereign debt crisis. Australian shares are firmer, but the market is being held back by miners after copper prices fell on weakening near-term demand prospects. And to talk more about stocks, Justin Harper of IG Markets joins us this morning. Good morning, Justin. So are markets susceptible to further losses if more signs of fiscal, fiscal distress in the Eurozone start to emerge? Yeah, I think the markets are looking quite vulnerable at the moment. You know, we have obviously the Spanish debt crisis, which has reared its ugly head uh, with the eurozone now back into the uh, you know back into the fore, and we've got you know the U.S. economy is faltering a little bit there. Worries about China, so there's no real bright spots on the economy at the moment. And so uh, yeah, at the moment they're very sensitive to any bad news. Well, will quarterly earnings determine whether the recent pullback has been exhausted uh, or are more losses justified? Do you think? I think the U.S. corporate earnings season, which has just kicked off, is yeah, going to be a very good barometer of how you know the, the health of the U.S. economy. We've had Google out this uh, last week and J.P. Morgan. Last night we had Citi, and they've all come in pretty positive there. So you know the signs are good that the corporate earnings season will be good, but there's still a lot of uh, a lot of negative news about the U.S. economy with employment not growing as fast as they would like. So you know this this would be good definitely to see this this happen if uh, we do get a positive uh, corporate earnings season. Well, you know, Spain, the cost of insuring Spain's debt hit an all-time high. So does Spain have the ability to finance its debts? I think Spain is in a very difficult position. It's not the so fact that it's got huge debts, because it, it doesn't. When you compare it to Portugal and Italy, the debts aren't huge. Uh, but it's got a lot of uh, costs that it needs to kind of cut back on. Uh, something like 27 billion euros, which is the equivalent of um, 45 billion Singapore dollars, which is a huge amount. So it's going to struggle to do that, and all the time the economy is contracting. So yeah, it faces a very tough task. And, of course, the confidence isn't there, because you know the bond yields, they have to offer more than 6% to get people to take up its debt. So, yeah, it does face some huge issues. So do you see Europe getting into this vicious cycle of economic contraction and budget cuts? I think so. The Eurozone is teetering on the, the brink of recession and every time we have all these austerity measures they push it further and further. You know the threat of a deeper recession there because jobs will have to be cut businesses will go bust, so that means less revenues for the government to actually pay off the debt. So it could be a downward spiral and a, yeah, very much a vicious circle. Well, U.S. jobs creation in March came in at only half the pace seen in the prior month. So is economic recovery still continuing to improve? I think the, uh, the U.S. Uh employment figures disappointed a lot of people when they came out on Good Friday and the markets haven't really recovered from that because they'd hope they'd pinned their hope so much on the employment in the US lifting the rest of the economy but the, the Fed chairman Ben Bernanke did say that employment was very much out of sync with the economy the economy wasn't growing very fast employment was growing fast and he wondered why that was and now we're seeing maybe those numbers weren't actually that you know that, that were good after all they were they were buoyed by uh, unusually uh, high warm weather which also had an effect there. So, you know, that could, be, uh, that could be the reason for such good numbers in the first part of the year. All right, let's look at China, Beijing's decision to allow more UN flexibility over the weekend. You think Chinese authorities are confident of avoiding a hard economic landing? I think so. You know, that's what they're trying to sort of put those, paint those pictures there, that they are, uh, they are still on course for a soft landing there. You know, they, their GDP figures were 8% plus, which uh, by Chinese standards weren't brilliant, but by anybody else in the world, they're, they're very healthy numbers. So I think the Chinese, it's totally overcooked about the, uh, China having a hard landing and struggling at all. I think the economy is very strong. Lending's very strong. We've seen car sales, retail sales come in much better than expected. So I'm very confident that China, the economy will keep on growing. So is the yuan ready to become a global currency and is the Chinese currency close to fair value as Beijing is asserting? I think what the uh, what the Chinese did yesterday with uh, wi widening the uh, the trade band was a positive sign. It was welcomed by the rest of the uh, economic community, but they've still got a lot of work to do. They they said that they will appreciate the yuan a little bit more, but uh, you know it's been at low levels for so long. So I think this is definitely a positive step. But there's still a lot more to do if it wants to compete with the U.S. dollar and the yen as a global currency. Well, is China's first quarter economic growth data negative for risk assets like base metals and gold in the short term? I think, yeah, they, they were very disappointed, the uh, global markets by the China GDP figures, and uh, that had a very much a knock-on effect, which we've seen at the first part of this week as well. We've seen commodities, we've seen equities and uh, foreign exchange. They've all taken a hit from the, the, from the China low numbers, and so we're now struggling to uh, sort of pick the markets up from that base. All right, thanks, Justin, for that. Thanks for joining us this morning, and that was Justin Harper of IG Markets Singapore. And that's a wrap of business news for now. Back to Susan Patrick.
And thanks for that update there. That was you in with the uh, business interview, but we're going to come back with another uh, interview regarding health. Yep, it's a skin disease that could lead to heart disease. We find out the link and treatments when we return.